Hello out there. Welcome to the second video in this series that I titled Three Mortal Enemies of Christ-Centered Faith. The first video was to explain what I meant by Christ-Centered Faith before we now go on to look at those three mortal enemies one after the other. So this particular video is to address mortal enemy number one which is self-centered Christianity. What do we mean by that? Now, there are two closely interrelated things I want to point out here, very much uh, alike, but yet they are different. Number one is a Christianity that revolves primarily around personal salvation, blessing, and general well-being. It's all about meeting human needs and wants. Those needs could be spiritual needs or material needs. I'm saying that because there is a tendency for us to think when we mention needs, it's all about material needs. But no, spiritual needs. There are spiritual needs as well. For example, um, the need to get people saved from their sins so that they will not go to hell and um, uh, get them to be holy so that, you know, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. And, um, uh, and in, you know, so all of that, and of course, ultimately, um, make heaven for all eternity. So all of that are spiritual needs, basically. You find out that it's still all about the person. That's why I said it's personal salvation. So material needs have to do with, you know, getting people to prosper materially, do well in their academics, get good jobs, get promoted at work, save them from harm's way and, uh, you know, solve human problems, solve the various problems that we may encounter in life and all of that. So those are material needs. But so if you look at those two, spiritual and material, they are still... Uh, basically personal. That's why I call it personal salvation. So it's a need-driven Christianity built around meeting needs and solving problems. We'll come back there, but let me quickly move on to the second uh, point. You know, I'm trying to describe what I mean by self-centered Christianity. So the first is personal salvation which revolves around meeting needs. Now, this second one is Christianity that centers primarily around self, the individual. It's individualistic in nature. Um, I, me, self. It has very little to do with our corporate essence. Uh, we use the term body of Christ, but there is very little or no revelation understanding of the practical outworking of the concept of body life. It is still very much about me and my God, my race, my prize, my reward, my purpose, my destiny, <laughs> my calling, my ministry, my church, you know, my oh, my battles, my victories, my relationship with God. It's about God and I, Jesus and I, my Holy Spirit and all that. So there is a sense to which some of this may be true. But let me paint two scenarios that will help us to understand the difference. Uh, or at least where to draw the line. Think of a school setting and then a relay race. You know, in a school, the students go to the same class, they listen to the same lectures, they can even do assignments together, group projects together, group discussions and all of that. But in the final analysis, it is still very much an individual pursuit. At the end of the day, you sit down for your exam, you get your own grades, and the certificate is yours it cannot be shared so even though you are going to class together everybody is well aware that is here 
to fulfill his own destiny as it were you know so that's that about the school setting it's individualistic even though we may do things together but think about a relay race now there are four runners in that race no matter how well the uh, first runner does or performs uh, the performance is performance cannot be uh, attained it will not be rewarded based on his own performance because it's one singular race so uh, he can't say that oh i beat all my other contestants you know to exchange the baton so i'm done i've won no He's still on his toes, he's cheering his, his uh, other colleagues, the other legs, he's cheering them, he's praying, he's hoping that they also do well because his own success is not divorced from the corporate success, the corporate success, the success of all the other legs put together. And that is why the writer of Hebrews in chapter 11, I think the last verse, says that they... That means those who have gone ahead of us, you know, the Old Testament saints and by extension, the New Testament uh, saints too. Those who have gone ahead, they cannot be perfect without us. They have not entered into their reward, you see, because it's one race. They are waiting for us. That essentially is what Christianity really is, is all about, you know, if if you have not understood um, the corporate essence of Christianity, then uh, I'm sorry you have not yet understood New Testament Christianity because the philosophy of the Christian faith is, is not individualism. It's community. It's us. It's family. Even when God was to create mankind, he said, let us create man and when he said man is not just unitary man uh, the male gender is mankind male and female all right so it's an us here uh, um, um, all the descriptions that were used in the scriptures to refer or to describe the body of christ are essentially corporate think of the body of course think of the bride it's not several brides it's not god having the lord jesus having several brides no it is one bride but with many members so it's corporate think of a building it says we are the house of god all right we are the uh, the a habitation of god in the spirit now think of a building that uh as probably uh built with ten thousand blocks now at the beginning of the whole process, each of those blocks are individual in nature. But by the time they are subjected to the building process, they all come together to make one singular building. At the, by, by the time the building is finished, you cannot point to, oh, this particular block because they've laid down their individual identity as it were. And they have all come to, uh, to share the corporate identity of the building that is what original new testament christianity is really about all right so all the descriptions you know the new man is a corporate man uh, the body the bride the army it's it's still um, expressing or describing the corporate nature of our faith of the new testament faith and i just pray that the lord will give you this revelation but you know if we look uh into christianity today it is wholly individualistic in nature it is self it's about the individual self and the, on one side and on the other side it's about you know it revolves around uh personal salvation meeting of needs um, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to shoot 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to continue from here. Uh, in the next video, I'll be telling you why is this a problem. I mean, you look at um, uh, personal salvation. Um, is that not what true faith is supposed to be doing and all that? I'm going to share with you in the next video why this is a problem.
till I come your way again. Goodbye for now.